Oh. Howdy. Welcome to On the Wash. Howdy. So this week we were in our home city of Dallas, Texas to compete in the Homestead Weekend. Which was the first home game of the Overwatch League and esports as a whole. And us, the Dallas people, were hosting it. This event was so massive, not only for us, but for esports in general, because it was the first home game. And this isn't just Overwatch, this isn't just Overwatch League, this isn't just for Envy or Dallas Fuel, this is for the whole of esports. So it's an opportunity for us to go play in front of our home crowd in Dallas of about 4,500 screaming fans. Uh, it was a really, really cool opportunity uh, to be able to go and, and, and play in the environment, play in a game that is specific to us. It's not just the Blizzard Arena, it's, it's our arena. This weekend is super important for us, but it's also super important for esports in general because it's really one of the first tests of can a localization work for a, a franchised esports league. Traditionally in esports, you see teams traveling to like one set location, and there's no real team with like a geographic location that's hosting it. So there's no real home and away type of thing like in traditional sports. It's not just an event with a bunch of teams, it's an event with your team. Um, and, and, and I think this is one of the most important ones because it's really a gauge of if the next few seasons of Overwatch League will work out the way that we're anticipating it will. And to, to have it in our backyard, in our city, was just incredible. So this week was unique for us because playing uh, outside of LA means that we're playing outside of a normal practice space. It also includes a day of travel, as well as you know different housing and that kind of stuff. Since our organization is based out of Dallas, uh, it, it wasn't too hard of a transition. We were able to set up in, in our you know, organization's offices to practice for the week. It was really sweet, nice view. It's right next to the American Airlines Center. The offices themselves I liked personally more than our training facility, which our tra training facility is really good, but I liked that area more. It was more my style than where we are in LA. Uh, okay, move. <laughs> It definitely feels great to be with the rest of your family. You know, being in LA while, the, while our organization is in Dallas is, it's it's nice because we are family here, but it's way better to be in Dallas with everybody. It was nice to see them. It's always a pleasure to, to be around them. So definitely a good thing for us to be able to be with them right before the event. It's, like a, that. it's like a packed house. It's, like, it's almost, almost like uh, when you're a kid and it's like Thanksgiving, all your cousins come to see you. And they're like taking up all your space, eating all your food. It's a lot like that, but I'm happy. We're gonna start working this week. So remember, even though we're in Dallas, even though we've got a whole bunch of stuff going on, uh, scrims are still our top priority, okay? Being in that unique environment meant that we had to schedule things out a little differently. You know, our times were kind of shifted because of the time zones, as well as, you know, the spaces we used. We had to share with, you know, some of our other Envy teams, as well as uh, just the, the whole staff. So it was unique, but it was definitely very exciting and very fun. We were pretty much trying to keep up our regular practice schedule that we have when we're in LA. So there's no like real discrepancies or inconsistencies with how we were prepping for our matches against Valiant and Houston. Coming off an 08 week, we were a little concerned with how everything would go because any 08 week is really hard to deal with. Um, and we wanted to make sure that we could bounce back off of this. And so a lot of our practice was focused on the basics. It was focused on fundamentals. We wanted to take the things that broke down the previous week and kind of turn them into building blocks that we could you know, build for this week. I think overall our screens ran re really well. Uh, we had a lot of talks about how we want to play GOATS and how we want to play the game. Uh, and we pretty much practiced what we talked about and we started playing better and better with more confidence. And I think our screens re went really well with what happened last week and transitioning into this week and being in Dallas like with everyone there, I think was a, was a great turning point for the Dallas Fuel team. It made us come together and really think about where we are as a team and what things we need to improve on and, and how far we can actually go. And to take all of that and go into the matches in front of our fans, I think was one of the coolest things in the world. They're T posing for yes. luck? It's not for luck, it's for power. Entering the arena on Friday, it was honestly a really cool experience to see the stage lit up the way it was and all the, the Dallas Fuel stuff everywhere. It was kind of surreal. Yeah, when we walked in, it was like, holy, this thing is like huge. And the fact that we sold out is pretty crazy. Seeing the actual event and the stage and the arena was incredible. Like. 
there's no way to ex express the fact that that is our setup, that is our home, and that's what we created. I was really proud of, of what uh, Astro, Dallas Fuel, and NV staff has accomplished. I think it was great what they did, and during the weekend we saw that everything that they did was perfect. That's what the f I'm talking about. <laughs> That's what we wanted right there. So I was just kind of like daydreaming, thinking of like how many people are going to be there and what it's going to be like when we're actually on stage. It's one of those things that, regardless of if you're in esports or if you're just in the entertainment industry or whatever, it's something that you dream of. You know, as a kid, it's like it's like this this stadium, this arena built towards something that's about you. You know, it's something that. I put my heart and soul into, that our team puts our heart and souls into, and it's dedicated to us, and people are gonna be there to support us. And it's something that you know you, you dream of your whole life, and it's, it's one of the most surreal experiences. So walking into the arena and seeing it all was one of my favorite moments of the whole weekend because it's, you know, it, it kind of starts to hit you that like, this is us, you know, this is for us. And it really makes you feel special. Going into match day uh, was definitely interesting. Um, there's definitely a lot of excitement, nervousness. You know, all those fans in there, the whole production's based around you. So it's definitely a little bit of pressure of, you know, wanting to perform. The matches were scheduled to where we would be the last match of the day. Um, so we, you know, we had some time for players to kind of chill and prepare mentally and just kind of get, get themselves ready. All right, boys, how you feeling? Uh, really, 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 really good, 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 good. When we entered warm-ups, we were feeling really confident. We're warming up against a really good team, and we're having really good performance. And it felt like, you know, this match versus Valiant was going to be one that, you know, we had overcome a lot of our, our pain points from the last week, and we felt like this was our match to take. We knew what they were going to run, we knew what we needed to run to win, and we were extremely confident in this. No matter what happens, you have big brain, trust yourself, okay? This, confident, okay? Every call, confident, all right? So going from warm-ups to getting ready to, to walk on stage, you know, the excitement was, was, was building and you could tell everyone was really excited for this. I, I didn't really know what to actually expect in terms of, you know, like what the environment would feel like. But I don't think we could, ever could have been prepared for just how much support the fans were going to give when we walked on stage. The crowd erupted. It felt amazing. Like, I, we didn't expect that. We didn't expect, like, when we co come in, like, so much noise. It was pretty insane just hearing everybody screaming and like shouting when we walk up. And you could feel the whole stage just shake. And it was like, it was one of the most surreal experiences you know, we've ever, we've ever felt. It pumped us up. Uh, we were so pumped up and we, we were so ready to go in. Listen, this week, this is our fans out there. No matter what we do, those Fans are gonna are gonna support you literally through everything. We've been at our worst in season one, and they still supported us. So even now, when we're doing well, they're gonna support us. So when we go out there, you be confident, and you listen to each other, and we will absolutely stomp Valiant. This is our city. This is our arena. <laughs> it's our rules. So we're gonna burn blue on three. One, two, three. Burn blue. <laughs> their home arena for the very first time. Make some noise out of it, set of four, the Dallas Fuel. Watching the players go on stage was uh, one of the proudest moments I've been as a coach, I think. Seeing the guys walk out there for the first time and from that packed crowd was Amazing and incredible. Uh, I felt like a proud parent. Uh, Taz's mom was in full effect at that time. Felt like mama bird, my little baby birds, you know, were, were getting the recognition they deserve. I feel a little bit nervous and I feel I got so many loves and cheering.
I couldn't believe myself. Like so many people watching me, cheering me. Like they say, OG, OG. It was amazing. This team has come quite a long way. You can see them now. Make some noise for the Dallas Fuel. No idea what kind of response the fans would give when Valiant walked on stage, but when they did, and the whole crowd erupted in this big boom, you know. For the Los Angeles Valiants! Oh, yes! I love it. I love it. They knew they'd be walking into this. That's when it, you could tell it hit Valiant like, this isn't our stage, like we're on someone else's stage. And, and you could see it in their faces, and every, our whole team was like, Whoa. On the point, make some noise, Alan, event center, it's time to get started. And Dallas Fuel are off and out of the gates. So there was definitely a little bit of, you know, nervousness, excitement. But as we pulled off that first combo, we, and, and we got the first kill, and the crowd just really erupted. Carefully. The AKM get really charged up here early. Oh, you see the bubbles going down onto the Ryan. It's so much easier to generate that charge. You could tell, like, everyone kind of kind of turned on and the confidence came and, and you can feel the support from the together. crowd. You think Dallas rides a lot of this momentum. Oh my gosh, that crowd was very early. Okay, let's it go now. Trent stands to respond for the Los Angeles Valley, but it might not be enough. It's a big shot from OG. The you could, you know, feel the whole arena shaking. I mean, I hear that, like, holy shit, what is that? This was the moment that I knew that we had won the series even though we were on the first fight of the first map. We played that first fight so perfectly that it was no way we were going to lose that match. Fate is forced back, he's still he's low and down, so back in control, and the grab to follow it up, the timing is good, Shadow comes in, fight down, and there it is! Good start for the Dallas Fuel here. The precipice have taken this round, and now the Doom Fist comes out from a duel, he's putting it gets finally grenaded, Matt, and there it is, KSF just blowing the smithereens immediately! Matt one, Dallas Fuel! You guys are f***ing awesome. Take this, all right? The Dallas Fuel, have they done it? Did their confidence get the better of them here as both teams go for the South Area? A big shatter, OG again! Duelty's is pinned. Space has a self-destruct, but where does he put it? His team's been cut down by OG. The hammer is swinging for the fence, and no gets himself too. And he liked their apples. Space is knocked out of his mech and closer. The South Area was there, OG. It's the fire strike on Agilities. And who else from the Valley is going to step up? There's nobody left. Fate is down. Custer hanging in there once more, but it is Custer's last stand. And that'll be two maps for two for the field. Ah, oh, they came trying to hype the crowd up. The Dallas Fuel have been sick in the first two maps. Listen, the energy's good, but we need to stay focused, all right? All right, the series is not over. So we need to keep our heads in it. Keep up the energy, keep up the comms, listen to each other, and we'll be totally fine, all right? All right, let's get out there. Oh, no. yeah. Ties them all up, Soundberry comes out, response from Dallas, fight goes for the shot, it gets two, I can't even OG, but no! Small attempt on note, but he stayed inside of his back for a long time. Now it has to be the trace of KSF to keep this one contested, but the Graviton serve will end it! A lot of pressure on the one's OG, but Unko responds, he had his own transcendence, and he got it just a little bit later. Okay. We're going to the Junkertown, all right? Yes, can I put that? That's, that's uh, what I thought you were going to say, we're going to the Junkertown. We're going to Junkertown, all right? We're going to give them the ultimate combo. Close by, reinforcements can arrive if they can survive long enough, but I don't think that's going to be possible. Kareem goes down first, then Agility's falls. KSM out of the mix, a fire strike, a temper of faith. He's returned, but he's all alone in enemy territory. Going into that match and playing like a really stellar match, getting a clean 4-0 on the home stage is really great. Because like right when we were done and we had finished the fourth map, everybody was chanting and cheering for us. We felt really happy. Uh, we wanted to make everyone that came to support us proud, and I think we did. I was really proud of how we played, and I'm pretty sure everybody on the team knew that that was like 
probably the best match we had played so far in the season. It was really nice being able to win such a clean first match. When we took the 4-0, it was a very emotional moment because, you know, even though it was valiant, like it was a win in front of our, our home crowd. And I think the, the whole team, you know, felt that that was like a really special thing and, and, and we wanted to make sure that, that it was. How feeling, Jane? Oh, Jane? I'm feeling pretty good. We're, good, we're done, we're 50% less stressed after we beat the Valiant. I will be 100% less stressed after we beat Houston. Until then, focus. Serious, James. Serious. <laughs> Going into day two, you know, I think we were still extremely confident. Now that we had an idea of what to expect on stage and the support and, and how it affects us mentally and emotionally, um, I think we felt extremely good going into the Houston match. You know, I think everyone was really excited. Uh, a handful of players were really focused, but I think it, overall it was it was this level of excitement, ready to play this match. It was an important match for us. We're in front of the home crowd. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. It is the moment that you have been waiting for. We are coming back for the Battle of Texas. Houston Outlaws going up against the Dallas. It was, it was really cool because it wasn't just an overwhelming one like it was for Valiant, but it was like this big back and forth between the small section of Houston fans and the overwhelming, incredible Dallas the fans. The crowd has been electric this entire weekend, but everyone's been ready for this. Coming into this, the half and half on the crowd, people cheering for Houston, people cheering for Dallas. It seems like we've got a decently split crowd. It certainly does. All right, this weekend has already been really good for us, okay? But this, this match is what we've been working towards all week. Okay? All right, now listen, the crowd out there is ours. There's some Outlaws fans, but they're very, very outnumbered. So listen, they are extremely scared of that stage, right? Everyone is, because when we're on that stage, we dominate, all right? So when we go out there, the fans have supported us this long. Let's show them why. Well, let's go ahead and bring them out, ladies and gentlemen, presenting your home team. It's the Dallas Fuel. We were pretty like confident that you know the fans had our back, and I think we were pretty prepared to give Houston back what they had given to us the other what was it like three times. Even though we knew Outlaws had been prepping for us for a long time because they wanted to you know be the spoiler uh, to, to the whole crowd environment thing, you know, but at the end of the day, you know, Houston was still winless, and we weren't. And so we knew like we were gonna win this. We didn't want to let anyone down. We wanted to like beat them. 100% uh, we wanted to like stomp them. All right, here's the deal. We are about to go into our match versus Houston, and I've never been more confident in anything in my life. Houston's scared of that stage because we have the best fans in the world, we have the best team in the world, we're gonna show everyone why. Let's do this. I hear you guys cheering in the crowd. Are you ready to kick things off? Let's go ahead and jump straight into game on Night Market. This roster. Already, Rock is taking so much damage. The push for the first play. He takes him down. He finds first blood. That's going to be a breakup on the Dante's back as well. His point going down. An absolute slaughter. So a couple knockdowns and a fire strike will get the double kill. Rock is a chance to disappear in an instant. And the Dallas Fuel look dominant on the first real fight. OG playing up in the front, one of the shield range. Answering ground comes in. We're looking to get back. He gets taken down. Shake follows him into the grave. And things just continue to look fantastic for the Fuel. The transcend. Now point going to be gone. OG starting to take down rapidly. It seems like a Dallas Fuel should just be able to take this with a juice here on the ball. Now we're going to be thinking about it. Rock is going to be eliminated. It's just a matter of cleanup here for Dallas Fuel as they kick things off for the victory on the Shock Tower. Now, this swap onto McCree was exactly what they needed. It was exactly what they needed to shut down James Starr, control the board. The first map, we actually destroyed them. Uh, we played really good. The catch Rockus, he's still going to be alive, but now we're going to have the Nano Blade coming through. Push up on the high ground, Links are going to be taken down. Zachary looking for another target, trying to find the mercy. Unable to quite lock point down, but the kills are still coming through in favor of the Dallas Fuel. They finally break their way through on the point A. They drain down to a minute and 20 seconds, but now A will be there. On the max, they can't quite get the kill there on the point. They will be taken down in the end of the bottom. Rockus managed to find him. AKM dead on the tracer. There's still three minutes left to go. The Houston Outlaws look to take this map. I think they're going to do it. There's just no way to stagger this anymore. There's no way to slow this down. The final driver coming in. Touch, touch, touch. Check it, check it, check it, check it. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a series on our hands. We are tied up one to one. 
Anubis is one of those maps where there's a lot of different styles that people play. There's definitely favored styles, but we knew that they could pull out you know, something unexpected there, and they did. They cheesed us, and we, were, we weren't ready for that cheese, so they took that, that map away. So, so they, they got that map, but we weren't, we weren't phased by it. It wasn't one that you know, took our confidence down. Yeah. <clears throat> but it's fine, it doesn't matter. We're focused on the next one. Oh! <laughs> big net! That's, big a, net. that's a big yes. net. Mwah! Josh and Gam! It felt like once we got them off of the cheese comps and off the, like the non-traditionals, we were just destroying them and they were so hot worse. Before and down bear to start things off was out of the huge half buck. Closer gonna be holding on to one of his own. Dante jumps back and trans located the box going in. There's the bike Jake. He can take him down. The MP comes through, catches free, but only AKM gonna be eliminated for the moment. We'll see that tackle will get finished off, but OG with the hammer, with the man oh, so the push him all the way out into the back. He's still not taken down yet. Bionic helps him along a little bit. You could feel the energy in, in the arena, and when we took that, it was like, all right, now we're match point, we're about to take this, we're about to take the Battle of Texas for the first time. The, the energy was like, you know, you could feel it, but, you know, it was, it was insane. On AKM, beaming people down, shield drops for Muma, AKM gets that blank angle, the kills just spill and forth. Dallas Fuel have the momentum on their side. <laughs> All right, the spray is coming down as well. That's Dallas some, Fuel. Uh, Texan tactical crouching. Fuel still a fighting chance as AKM nearly has another grab online. 8% left to go. Oh, he's shot it. to delay. He's trying to rush out right now, but I think it's going to be too slow. There's the grab. No way. Yeah, they cannot do it. The grab comes down. Boink very dangerously close to having that sound barrier. For two, you see where Zachary is waiting to drop down as they come approach. Here he comes. Yeah, he's going to be coming out. He finds all six of them. The heel denied. Let me hear jump for good measure. And AKM, he doesn't need the tag finder. He scoops a double kill with the healing rockets. Gets another one on the Numa there. The Burma Sagrim, they hold the ult advantage as well. Has that primal rage. He comes he low. low. He's chasing him. Oh, he's getting him. Oh, oh, the clutch sleep dart. Comes in from Oko. He's safe. And they manage to find the kill. Jumping back down. OG. And they hold this off. He comes in from point. Bomb up. Open up. Cool Matt looking for the picks. Boom comes in. He gets a double double. The support go down. Still came up, the winners, notes bomb, enough kills coming in. They have to take it down in mid air. They cannot take it. Dallas Fuel, they take it home. It was one of the coolest feelings in the world to be able to see, like, on my players' faces, you know, just how much it's actually meant to them. But we felt amazing. Like everyone just removed their headsets, started jumping, started hugging, hugging each other. It was just an unforgettable moment. After we won that, you know, all the staff went on stage with the players, and, and we wanted to make that moment special for everybody. You could tell that every player kind of had their own their own kind of emotions going through. 
and you could see OG get emotional, you know, Uncle and Zach got emotional. I think, I think you know, multiple people cried. A bunch of staff almost cried too. It was pretty emotional. Like, OG started crying because of stuff, and then OG was crying, and then I started thinking of stuff, and I started crying, and then Uncle saw me crying, and because I was crying, Uncle started thinking about me crying and stuff, and then Uncle started crying, and then lots of hugs, and yeah, it was pretty emotional. Young players like OG and Zachary, I think it was something very important for them to, to finally meet uh, all their fans and, and hearing them change, change their name like Zachary, Zachary, OG, OG, like it's, for them it, it meant the world for them. I'm like emo emotional person, but like they made me cry because I, I don't, I don't know how to say, but my mind was like, remind everything, my past, like everything. I can say just it was really amazing in my life. Like I didn't expect like I can have this experience. So just it was really, really amazing. And then just I'm really proud of myself and team. You know, I think a lot of the players got emotional because, you know, it, it is that dream that you've had since you're a kid of, you know, being on stage, you know, your heart and soul on display and people being all about it, you know, cheering for you and supporting you through it all. It was one of the coolest feelings in the world to be able to see just how much it's actually meant to them. This weekend was very special. I don't think a lot of people would really understand uh, if you weren't there, if you weren't really on the inside. To, to kind of set it up, it was an 08 week for us. We were at a, at a low for the stage. Um, it felt like, you know, a lot of the stuff we'd been working on wasn't going well, and so, you know, to, to go into it and give the performance that we did, you know, in the setting that we did, and to set that precedence for what, what eSports home games should be, it kind of made everyone realize how much support we actually have. And to, you know, be able to physically see and hear and feel it, you know, is, is something different entirely. And it really drives you and really motivates you to, to want to be better, and to want to be the best. It's just amazing to see that the fans are now part of our family like that and they definitely fueled our team, no pun intended. I mean, they just like gave us so much energy and our players so much energy and that was so obvious. Uh, but then for the players, man, a bunch of them were shedding tears because this is a grind, man. It's like you work really, really hard to get to these big moments in your life and the players are shedding tears because they work hard every single day. They give every single thing that they have. and. You know, it's really emotional when you actually make it all come together. And so I'm really happy for every single one of these guys, man. And I'm just going to go keep giving them hugs. It, it felt so much more meaningful than every other game with the Blizzard Arena does. You know, it felt like this is something that, this is our show, something that we're putting on, that we're giving to the fans is like our, our heart and soul, our everything. And, and you can tell how much work we put into this. I want to say thank you to, you know, Hastro and our, our whole org, everyone that kind of put this together because it wasn't just, just a thing for the fans. It was a very big deal for our team. Um, and, and it meant a lot to, to everyone here to be able to have, you know, childhood dreams come true, you know, in a stage like that in Dallas. It, it was an extremely awesome thing. I'd like to thank all the Dallas fans for coming out to the homestand weekend and really making it something special and it was definitely something that we wouldn't have been able to do without all of you guys always constantly supporting us. Thank you for always having our backs and staying with us and supporting us even when we're going through rough times. I think we have the best fans in, in the league right now, the best fans in the world, so I'm really thankful for everyone cheering for us. I just appreciate for our giant crowds. Thank you for loving us and sharing us. I couldn't have asked for a better weekend. That, that has got to be right up there amongst the greatest things I've ever experienced. It's uh, going to be unforgettable for us. It's going to be one of our all-time favorite moments. So I'm really thankful for all the fans that made that moment amazing. I think this shows that Overwatch League is real, our fans are real, and we're, we're here, here to stay. So I got the uh, the nice shirt, the cowboy hat, Stetson, and I got these uh, Wrangler jeans, my Chasey boots. Pretty sweet. Oh, and I got the, the belt that matches the boots too. You're a true cowboy now. Yeah, I'm a real cowboy.